What's up everyone, Caleb here with another Indiana Jones video. So today I want to do a video that I've been wanting to do for a while. I know I've talked about some of my hats before. I have done like the different looks of Indiana Jones video, which I do want to do a follow-up to. And I wore different hats for that. But I don't think I've ever done a video aside from like some of the hats I made and my indie gear breakdown where I've like sat down, showed all my hats and talked about like where I got them and uh, all that kind of fun stuff. But the interesting thing is this will also be an update too because uh, if you go back on my channel, none of the hats that you see are the same as they were. So they're all different now. They all uh, swapped roles and the reason that they did is because as I progressed with hat making and learning how to make hats you kind of get a feel of the felt and stuff and so there were just things that could have been better and then I switched around and, and they are all locked into <laughs> what they are supposed to be now so uh, and that just came with learning about making hats so we'll start with my pride and joy one which is my Raiders of the Lost Ark hat. This is one I made myself. It's got my blue satin liner in there. It's got the Raiders turn to it so you can see stitching of the sweatband right there which is where it's supposed to sit at the back of your head. It's off to the side because I did put the Raiders turn in this hat. If you're unfamiliar with the Raiders turn, that is um, that the hat used in the film, it had gotten turned on Harrison's head. So the true front of the hat is about here, where the bow, the center of the bow, sits above the ear. So that puts the front of the hat here, but somehow in filming, I'm not 100% sure how it happened, the hat got turned on Harrison's head and it still had the crease put here in line with the face but just on the it, it's wacky and it gives the brim its really unique shape so this is now my go-to Raiders hat it is the hat that I'm the most proud of out of all the ones I've made and this is actually the first hat I ever made but not the first Raiders hat the felt from this hat is the first hat I ever made. If you go back in my channel to the very first video I made of hats that I had made, it's supposed to be a Kingdom of the Crystal Skull one. It was very kind of Last Crusade looking, uh, honestly. And it was this particular felt. I ended up not being 100% happy with the look. And so after a while, I had just decided to reshape it to a Temple of Doom hat. And there it had stayed my Temple of Doom hat. You could even see that on on the most recent hat build video I did, uh, which was a Raiders hat. Uh, I show this hat as a Temple of Doom hat. The previous Raiders hat I made, this all gets a little confusing because all these hats have swapped roles. <laughs> so the previous Raiders hat I made, something about it spoke Temple of Doom to me. So I made that one the, temp the designated Temple of Doom hat, and I took this one, which was the Temple of Doom hat, reblocked it, despite it being the first felt I ever bought for making a hat, and one of the first hats I ever made, I completely reworked it from the ground up to make it a Raiders hat. Uh, it's not based on really anything particular, like Streets of Cairo or anything. If anything, I think it's just a good generic, because it doesn't have that bubble on the right side, like in Streets of Cairo. So I think it's just kind of a good generic, maybe like Peru idol grab uh, Raiders hat. And this is the one I wear almost every day. Let's check out another hat. So next up, this is my Kingdom of the Crystal Skull hat. It's got that blue rose satin liner. And this is actually my Advantage hat. If you go way back on my channel to my Indiana Jones gear breakdown, this was a hat I bought from Advantage. It's their Harrison Fedora, which is their kind of like factory made, more affordable one. And I talked in that video about how my American was showing when I ordered the size and the hat was too big, much bigger than I thought it would be. And I'd done, I, I'd done all kinds of crazy things to try to make it work. It was before I started making hats. So I had really jacked up the back side and it was all like wrinkled and folded in on itself and I'd kind of ironed it out. And there was all this really weird, wacky stuff going on with it. But I said I was happy with it as a beat up looking Streets of Cairo hat. It had that whole thing going on with it. And you could see that 
in my last video about the Raiders hat I made, I hope this isn't getting confusing, the Raiders hat that has now become the Temple of Doom hat, <laughs> I showed my ad vintage in there, and I had shown where, since it was supposed to be a Streets of Cairo hat, I had painted, doing that because it wasn't paint, painted dirt along the top of the ribbon and along the bottom. A lot of people called that out. <laughs> I've always put dirt on my indie hats, but it's frustrating because it's almost like when you don't want things to get dirty, they get dirty, but when you do want them to get dirty, they just sit, stay clean somehow. And it's like the felt just purges itself of dirt. And I think it was Joe's Props and Artifacts Tours? I hope I got that right. He was showing a Raiders hat that he had where he had painted the dirt on and his looked really good so I took a cue from him and mine was real dirt and but it was suspended in a glue matrix I was a little uh, hurt not hurt but a little embarrassed maybe just people talking about it it didn't look good but you know what I could be humble and admit they were right it looked really bad and so I had this idea that since I was learning since I'd already made a few hats since the Raiders hat is my favorite, I wanted to make a really perfect Raiders hat, or perfect in my eyes, and I wanted to be able to say that I did it. With my Vintage, I had thought my second most favorite indie hat is the Crystal Skull hat. I just love the way that Adventure Built made that hat. It looks beautiful. I got all that glue, dirt, paint off of the hat. Uh, which was not easy, by the way, especially to keep the felt intact. And what I did is, since I had that weird warping, that cinch of the felt in the back, I actually I cut out the sweatband, now that I had some hat making experience under my belt, resized the hat band, re-blocked the Ad Vintage felt on my block that I made, and reshaped it into a Crystal Skull hat. I think it looks like a phenomenal like Warehouse 51 style hat, especially the particular color of their Harrison uh, fedora. I think maybe a darker sable, which Advantage does offer, would look good for kind of the rest of the Crystal Skull. But as far as that beginning Nevada warehouse stuff, I feel like this is like a perfect color for that. Since I reblocked it and reshaped it, there's no more of that weird warping. There is some, some stain left over from that bad paint job I did on it. It really doesn't bother me at all. I don't know if you can make it out or see it, but the, the staining from it, I feel, looks a lot natural. Just kind of adds to the look of the hat. That is my Crystal Skull fedora. This is the second favorite one of mine. And you know, I'll just go ahead and say, I, I love Crystal Skull as a movie, too. I know it's divisive amongst fans, but I really like it. It's, it's very fun. That is my Crystal Skull and vintage. I will not say that I made it because I didn't make it, but I refurbished it. And I'm very proud of the refurbishment. And in my eyes, it's a great Crystal Skull hat. So let's move on to another hat. So here is my Temple of Doom Indiana Jones hat. So this was, if you go back on my channel and find the video of the Raiders hat that I made, and that was actually this one. It came out pretty good, so what I discovered is there's lots of weird things about the Raiders hat. It looks like it has the tallest crown, but it, its crown actually isn't as tall as I had made this one originally. Uh, so I feel like that was throwing off the look, and I think the way I cut this brim Oh, I did red. I got inspired from uh, Joe's Props and Artifacts, and I think uh, Kirk Brockman did the same thing, so I got inspired for a, a red liner for Temple of Doom. But I think the way I cut the brim, even as a Raiders hat, every single time I put it on, I couldn't quite put my finger on it, but it was just screaming Temple of Doom to me, and I, I don't know why that was. I, I think a lot of it was just whenever I was looking at it, when I put it on, and just really examining that brim, something about the brim was telling me Temple of Doom, even when I had the the, turn, the Raider's turn in it. So it no longer has the Raider's turn. Bow sits above the ear. Since I'd taken the, my Raider's hat, which was previously a Temple of Doom hat, turned it into a Raider's hat, I turned this one into my Temple of Doom, and I'm so glad I did this, because... This one was, was a pretty convincing Temple of Doom, a pretty close one. It could have been better, but it, it's almost like this hat just always wanted to be a temple hat. 
the felt said that it wanted to be a Temple of Doom hat, and you gotta listen to the felt. So happy that I made that decision, because all the hats I had, Ad Vintage is Streets of Cairo, this is Temple of Doom, and this is Raiders, they were all okay. But once I kind of unlocked what each one was should be, I, this probably sounds ridiculous, but once I did that, it's like I got a Crystal Skull hat that I'm more than happy with as a Crystal Skull hat. This one, I think, is a great Temple hat, and this one, I think, is a phenomenal Raiders hat, so that's why none of the hats are what they were pre previously on my channel. But this is the Temple hat. You know, don't let anybody dunk on the Temple hat, because people will, and a lot of people call it a very uh, basic hat compared to the Raiders, but it's got some weird things going on with it, too. One of those, I think the biggest one, is probably the center, the center crease, so it's got this straight line here and then it curves out here so I call it like a crescent moon shape I could probably find a photo uh, a screenshot that shows that from the movie but it's a very weird weird thing going on with it and then it's got the very light front pinch it's not very deep dense at all it's got its own unique little things as well and it's got the taper it's probably the one I wear the least just because I'm Raiders obsessed but when I'm feeling Temple of Doom, this hat does it for me. We've got one more hat to show you, so let's check that one out. So here is my gray Raiders Clipper. It didn't get a whole lot of screen time in the movie. It got its nickname, the Clipper, from the little Pan Am Clipper plane that he boards on his way to Nepal. And then it's also seen at the very end on the Washington Steps. And it's the dress nice fedora, the non-adventuring fedora. Some people call it the travel hat, which uh, made a comeback at Crystal Skull. I went with a black sweatband. This is another hat that I made. It does not have the Raiders turn, so it sits correctly on the head. And this is one I've really been wanting to do for a long time. I'll probably try to sneak a Crystal Skull one in there at some point. So the Crystal Skull one, it's the same thing, but it has the Crystal Skull Bash. It's just another little bit of Raiders that I love. It's got the nice Raiders type front pinch. It's a hat that I really love. Uh, it's great if you are an indie fan to just add a little something different and diverse to your hat collection to break up the various shades of brown. Any of these hats, even if you wear them with normal clothes, a lot of times if I wear an indie hat casually, I wear like flannel button-ups and, and jeans and I'll wear my indie hats with that but people still recognize it as an Indiana Jones hat where this that might be a little less likely you could wear it with nicer clothes go on a date with somebody uh, wear dress up a little bit this one came out a lot more stiff than all the other hats which I'm okay with so anyways I would like to also take the time to address a question I've started to get asked a lot more recently. Uh, I share the hats I make here on YouTube. I share them on Instagram. And I get a lot of people asking me now if I make hats to sell or if I'd be willing to make hats to sell. And so I thought I would answer that question. The short answer is no. Not because I don't want to, but because I'm still very new to hat making. And I feel like uh, figuring out what all these hats should have been in the first place was kind of helped unlock um, my ability to learn these skills. Um, but there are still issues that I have. One is that I have one hat block that I made myself and it is one size. It is my size which is about a European 57 and I think that's like a size 7 US. I find that a lot of especially men run about a 58 or larger and so to accommodate these different head sizes I need to make new blocks and making a hat block is not a lot of fun and it's a whole bunch more sanding than anybody would ever want to do but I would also need those blocks to be exact replicas of the one I have now because if I do Indiana Jones hats and people are going to want an Indiana Jones hat it, I just need to figure out the block situations I've read about different little tricks you could do like putting layers of felt over a block to make it bigger. Um, I did do that with a hat I made for my friend. It worked out pretty good. The hat fits him well. Uh, a little snug but not too bad. 
I also thought about the idea maybe I could cut my block in half and make like wooden inserts to expand it. It sounds good in theory, but in execution I don't know that that would work. So I got this whole sizing issue going on, and then I'm still learning how to do things correctly. I want y'all to know that I'm self-conscious pointing this out to y'all, but I need to let y'all know why exactly I'm not offering hats right now. You could see the stitching of the sweatband right there. I stitch them in by hand because a lot of professional hatters have a special kind of sewing machine that allows them to get the hat in place with the brim and uh, be able to just neatly stitch along the side to stitch that sweatband in place. And those are a lot of money too, money that I don't have. So I gotta stitch my sweatbands in by hand and they're sturdy, but I, I can't seem to negate this issue of that, that stitching showing. I try to get my ribbons placed just right and they kind of want to slide up a little bit sometimes. And so they, they're very good hats. I'm very proud of my hats. Um, I don't want to break my arm patting myself on the back or nothing, but I think they're very good indie hats. For somebody to give me money that they worked hard for, for a nice hat, I, that's something that I don't want on there. I don't want you to see the stitching of the sweatband on there. You know, I want it to be really, really good, and I gotta figure out that sizing thing, too. Long story short, I would like to offer hats. At some point, I just gotta figure out these things. I need a little bit more practice and experience. So I do get asked that a lot. That's where that sits, as far as uh, making and selling hats go, because I think it would be super cool to have my hats out there on other indie fans. Eventually, maybe. And I'd have to come up with a snazzy name. That's the indie hat collection just uh, these four so far. Eventually I would like to do a Crystal Skull travel fedora. Gotta get me a Last Crusade. I got to now at this point, and a, an Indy 5. I think a, a Mystery of the Blues fedora would be cool too. And th That one's got some unique stuff going on. Young Indy fedora, there it's endless. It's endless. The Indy hats you can make, it's, it's endless. I hope you had fun watching this and had fun checking out the different hats. I have fun just talking about hats. Thank you very much for watching. I'll have more indie content coming soon. I know sometimes videos are kind of far and few in between. I want to do a second uh, follow-up to the Indiana Jones looks as well as just some more hat stuff, gear stuff, movie breakdowns, what the movies mean to me personally, all that kind of stuff. Full-time dad and full-time job, so sometimes it's hard to Find the time to do that. Anyways, thank you very much for watching. I'll see you again with some more adventure Indiana Jones stuff.